Hello YouTube! I have here today Digital Designs DD712D, a new Redline red series. I have 12 inch model here uh, without these gaskets, these uh, rubber rings on the boot here and on the front side here. And uh, we will be checking out some of the features of this new Redline series, what kind of cool new stuff DD has on it, what kind of nice design features it has. And then we'll be checking out some of the excursion videos of the subwoofers and some parameters from this individual. So. First, we have a uh, the new DD logo, which is actually quite old, uh, but the new DD logo on top of here. We have the digital designs on the gasket here. Uh, I'll be taking these all off so we can check out the gluings and everything on the subwoofer just uh, from the outside. Check everything that if they are okay, are they using good enough stuff to make this work? Now we have a uh, pressed paper cone. We have a digital design own surround here. It actually says red line down in here and it has a line all over this place. Now, uh, this surround here is quite unique. You can, uh, you can barely see it on the image, on the video, probably not, but it has uh, the top side here is black, the downside here is black and on the center of this foam it has a red line going all around here. Simple, small stuff and it just works. I really, really enjoy these kind of uh, small details on the subwoofers. Uh, paper uh, dust cap here. It actually is a matte black with a, this nice shiny logo. Matte black is looks cool, looks really professional, but uh, with my greasy fingers, I already have put some finger grease on here and it looks kind of, uh, well, not that good anymore, but maybe some degreaser, it will be okay. Hopefully the paint won't go off. But the top surround here, <coughs> sorry about <coughs> that, is around from here to here. It is around uh, 26, maybe... 27 millimeters. Uh, let me just check this out to be exact. 27 to 28 millimeters in width, and in height we are at around uh, 25 millimeters. So 27, 25, or 20, 28, 25. This round is actually it is a um, uh, how can I say it has a like velvet feeling on it. It's really smooth and nice. It has small gloss here, so it's probably some kind of blend uh, with different kind of materials. It is quite unique for this subwoofer. Quite nice looking, nice feeling surround. Big surround, but not looking too wide, too fat. So it has a nice cone area. Um, the glue that they have been using up in here, let's check that out next. In here we have some residue. It is transparent glue and it is really flexible glue. Like nice, really, really, really gooey stuff. So if you're using a really hard, I can, yeah, I can peel it off. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're using a really hard glue in here, uh, it makes a hard point between the moving parts and the parts that should be contact uh, being still. Uh, it will start to break between those. Now this is a really flexible glue, so this is perfect for here. But if it is it too soft? So I have this little test here that I put my fingers uh, underneath the surround. This is really hard for the subwoofer, and I try to lift it. As you can see, it really bends it down. If I just, I can, yay! So I can lift my. <laughs> I was really, really. It was a really, really scary thing to do, but it held it nicely. The top surround is really strong, and the glues are really strong because I can lift the subwoofer from there. Who? It did not break. Uh, because this weighs about, uh, let's check from here, I have some uh, parameters and these in here. 
this weighs about 17.3 kilograms so that's a lot for a subwoofer uh, it cost 329 euros and let's go back to back to see more of the features it is a really good glue and it held nicely now the frame down in here is i well i got a dd shirt here dd hoodie here and I'm sort of a DD fan because I have digital designs on my car, the subwoofers, and on my wife's car. <coughs> but I've been testing a lot of subwoofers. And I'm, I've seen a lot of cool subwoofers. But this frame is something unique. It is versatile, it is rigid, it is huge. As you can see, the surround actually uh, can be a bit bigger. It can be like from these points here, it can be like really, really huge spider down in here. This nice big frame with good openings here to let the voice coil cool underneath and big holes here, still having really solid uh, features. This is a cast aluminium frame. We have around, uh, let's check this out, oops. We have around 5 mm thickness in here, and we have on the thickest part in here, we have around 40 mm, and lower here we have uh, uh, 9 mm. So it is really thick and it, it's full solid. <coughs> now, it does not, they, they have not spared anything in here, it's full solid. It, it's, it's quite unique feature with a digital designs reading here and DD audio logo here it all of these parts in here has a DD audio logo now the sur uh, top surround here has a red line and this has DD logo so they are their own not a universal basket or anything really good design on the frame then we have our leads coming from the voice call let me show them really cool oh, this is heavy really quickly for you as you can see we have two tinsel leads on both sides they are a bit uh, on top of the spider so they are not glued in they are only used by a uh, uh, they are stitched in but they are loose so they have some wiggle room and on on the side here on here we have little holes little holes for the tinsel leads to be coming out easily and they are only glued in with a quite flexible glue so <coughs> even that the uh, spider goes max maximum out like for the maximum excursion which actually is if we can see in here the maximum x mech maximum excursion of the subwoofer is 80 millimeters x max is only 40 millimeters now what's the between the numbers there the 40 millimeters plus and minus means that the voice coil winding is 40 millimeters over the top plate and 40 millimeters under the top plate. So it does not mean anything of the excursion. It just means how much the winding is over and under the top plate. Simple as that. Now the X mech value there tells how much the cone can move. So it can go 40 millimeters up and 40 millimeters down. Total of 80 millimeters. Actually, let, let's, let me just demonstrate you. They say that it can handle excursion of this. Now, if we look uh, centered is somewhere here, change the image back to here. About four centimeters on the center the cone can move this much nice really nice now we can see the excursion video soon so we can uh, de determine ourselves how much i managed to get the excursion out of this with just a <coughs> one four thousand watt amplifier now continuing on the spiders here we have two set of spiders top one is a little bit more rigid and this uh, down one uh, the under one and uh, it actually they have different kind of performance and the uh, I think the top one is limiting and the down one is just supporting so the uh, the 
when I drove this in, the surround up in here did not bend or made any 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 these torquing that I'm keep telling. Uh, so the limiting factor should be the spiders down in here. Not it can handle a much bigger spider back here. Hence you can put a much bigger coil. You can use the same frame on different kind of subwoofers. It actually has down in here. It has two set of. Uh, holes so you can fit different kind of top plates with a different kind of uh, magnets uh, i'm not saying but i'm hoping to see this frame with a neodymium magnet because i think the the other holes here are meant to be uh, that you have a let's say a neodymium magnet down in here which should be looking really good uh, the voice coil is a round copper one it has a brownish glue on it so actually the voice coil is made by uh, winding and adding some glue and then they are baked in oven or this kind of stuff uh, which gives them their natural color and <coughs> the hotter the bake in is the uh, darker the coil is now this is cool well let's say brownish looks like a copper coil uh, proper copper coil, round copper coil, really nice. It has holes over the uh, voice coil and actually I can... Oh, the top plate is not on here. Maybe I can find the place. Oh, the top plate is about the level of the holes in here, which is quite nice, actually, yes. Now, uh, continuing downwards, I can check the... Um, glue that has been used to connect the voice coil it is black ca glue and the glue that has been connected uh, used to connect these uh, spider uh, spacers here uh, it is actually quite hard i think this is like rubberized epoxy or something like this it is quite hard but just even even slightly uh, elastic so different kind of glues used in here and this should be yes this is i think this is epoxy because this i can make scratching on it and it just came out uh, with a really sharp uh, end like this standard glue used in here we have some kind of residue on here so it's not perfect uh, but we have this magnet boot uh, boot magnet uh, cover here so we can cover that out and uh, the top plate here is around uh, 14 millimeters 13 to 14 millimeters so if, if this is a let's say 40 millimeter thickness so the voice coil winding height is 14 plus 14 28 plus 14 uh, 30 42 millimeters which is actually quite nice 42 millimeter yeah sounds about right okay the ferret magnet here is a 60 millimeter thick so 20 millimeter slugs in here the back plate is a it's a little bit thicker it is like 50 millimeters thick it has a nice bevel here it has really really good uh, th this flare down in here it does not have any holes inside but it has holes over and on the center of the voice coil now uh, that's about the subwoofer on the outside what do you think about it so far please leave me a comment i like to discuss these subwoofers with you guys so let's check out the excursion video next i have on the here and as you can see, I can stretch it quite heavily. Now, I, I drive these subwoofers in and then I test the maximum excursion before it starts to make some kind of noise. Now, I don't know what noise it was. It was not bottoming out by any means. Uh, I, cannot, uh, I tried, but I cannot by my hand uh, bottom this subwoofer out. So, it's not bottoming, but I think it was uh, the... Uh, uh, tinsel leads or something that started to make a little bit mechanic noise uh, thus I only could get around like 70 millimeters uh, excursion on the subwoofer which is really good 
for a this price subwoofer. This is now not by any means the maximum excursion subwoofer there is, but it is a really good all around subwoofer. I, I, I hands down can recommend the subwoofer for any uh, anyone who wants to start using bass because it has a good spider pack here, a really big magnet here, and the overall design and overall features are good enough it to be even a sound quality wise a good subwoofer. Now if you are planning to play really low music this FS is around 28 on the web page uh, so you can play like really low music with this and without uh, audible distortion uh, really low like down to 30 Hz or something like that. Okay let's check out uh, one thing I forgot to mention uh, the um, the terminals here are actually five millimeters. I I measured them earlier today. They are five millimeters, so you can uh, f mm, yes, so you can fit like a four millimeter or up to six millimeter squared uh, wires to them. They are just standard uh, terminals here. I have two negative things to say about the subwoofer, and they are in here terminals. It does not have any glue on these. Let me show you. It does not have any glue on these uh, little uh, nuts here, so they might become loose. It has a spring uh, spacer underneath, so it should not come loose. But usually uh, the people who make it subwoofers put a dab of a, a glue on it so it won't come loose. And also it has this um, ABS plastic, I think it's ABS plastic. Maybe, maybe it's not ABS plastic, but it's plastic anyhow. A uh, plastic uh, spacer here that helps the terminals. Now if you make a enclosure that is uh, some kind of weak and uh, your subwoofer drops, you have your wires here, they don't come out, come loose and it will break this thing. Now it has a, uh, it, this is good enough for normal use, but if you want to be a little bit better with your design, and Digital Designs has already these uh, directly terminals here. This is a cast aluminium plate here with two holes. Now why are they not using these for the terminals? You can have these little terminal spacers that uh, allows the wire go through without uh, connecting onto the frame to avoid any short circuiting so they should have been used these instead of these plastic ones in my opinion this is by far very good and most common used uh, connection type but if you have your frame with a better connection why not use those uh, but these uh, probably if uh, Someday somebody broke this and wants it to be reconed. I will be using direct leads and putting them through here because it's just much wiser in my mind have a really good connection without any breaking parts. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm running out of um, my voice in here. I'll be making some videos today. So I will be just testing this out fast with parameters. Let's check them out. And then this video is a wrap, then we uh, continue discussing about uh, the subwoofers uh, on the comment, comment section. Now let's just turn the Dots V2 on, change the video here, I can check the parameters. Now I, uh, I don't have anything to raise this up, so the parameters will not be correct, because the back, uh, back plate holes are now shut, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm getting a around a little bit under 33 hertz of uh, FS with 1.4 ohms in here, and I've already said the that the cone is 20, 260 millimeters, and then my weights here are uh, 633 grams. Uh, I should be getting better weights in here, but hey, we're just testing here the subwoofer, and I will be checking the parameters for this subwoofer for now. It says it has 27 liter VAS, which is quite acceptable. Um, moving mass is 
341 grams probably because of the two spiders here and the copper voice coil that is okay qms is high 6.26 which is quite good uh, qes 6.61 qts 0.56 and almost we have 1.4 in parallel mode and in single coil should be a little bit higher than two ohms Two point three eight three is one voice coil, so it is uh, quite high for two on voice coil. But keep in mind, you can put like two of these um, in parallel and still play. It has a 0.5 ohm connection, but it actually is around uh, uh, 0.76 or something like that. Now, what do you like about these new DD uh, Digital Designs Redline series? I really enjoy these. I'm, uh, I really, well, I want, I really want one. Like, yes, I don't need new subwoofers, but I really enjoy that the subwoofer has uh, both sides looking good. Nice logo, simple, stylish. Uh, very mature look on the front side, nice uh, big surround, uh, nice gasket here, it looks it looks, looks really good, really expensive, really nice looking and when you turn it around it has a really good design frame, really big motor with a uh, these uh, rubbers sealing out this uh, glue stains and everything, everything looks sleek, no spills no nothing really major stuff happening here one negative only negatives is on the terminals that i can find in here plain good simple subwoofer good for first subwoofer good for uh, playing all around music i think digital designs has really come out a good design for this subwoofer what do you think leave me a comment share the video if you want uh, your friend to know about this new Redline series, uh, share the video if you like the video. Share the video if you like the video. I like the video. Subscribe. <laughs> okay, I see you on the next video. We'll be talking about more of the subwoofers. And stay tuned if you want to check out us on live. We are going live on Friday and Saturday at uh, 22 uh, Central Europe time somewhere there if you want to ask english questions we will answer them in english the majority of the streams will be in finnish though but this was digital designs dd712 what do you like it leave a comment see you on the next video bye bye